So, books. Those are still a thing, right? Yes, we have our Kindles, our iPads, and all kinds of tablets and reading devices, but you know, they still make books. On paper. And people actually still write things. It's not all just some jack-off in his bedroom on a webcam telling stories through YouTube or posting creepypasta on Reddit. There are honest-to-God authors in the world keeping tradition alive and telling actual stories about actual things. So, we have a book review. In video form. And it's a Predator book. That also has aliens in it. There won't be any spoilers here, I'm just going to give you the rundown on whether it's any good, and talk about some of the things we see in the book, if it's worth recommending, or if I'm just going to dump this in the trash at the end of this here video. For a more detailed written breakdown, head over to alpharookie.com, right now! Before jumping into the book itself, it's important to know there's a long history with the Aliens and Predator franchises in novel form. Just like the extended universe of Star Wars and Star Trek, where there's like a billion fucking books of God knows what's going on, there have been quite a few stories written that have expanded on the mythos that is the Alien slash Predator universe. You see, because back in the early 90s, Aliens and Predator comics were the shit. I mean, big time. We're talking sales in the six digits. So of course novelizations would show up as well. Just saying, if you really enjoy Aliens or Predator as a franchise, and like the comics, go to Amazon and dig up some of these old books and read them. They're great. Look at all those books. I went and dug these out of a bag in my closet just for this video. See how messed up and old they are? That's how you know I'm not just bullshitting or regurgitating stuff from the internet. I actually grew up on this. This is where I really learned to love sci-fi shit. And I'm missing some I lent out over the years. So you assholes out there, you know who you are. You still have my books. I want them back so I can throw them back in my closet and never read them again. So by now you're wondering, am I going to actually talk about this new Predator book? Why, yes I am, starting now. This Predator novel is actually the first in a new trilogy that will finish release during 2016. And this comes on the heels of an Alien trilogy of books that were released in 2014. It's cool to see that there's an interest in novels based on this franchise popping up again, because there were definite lulls lasting years when there wasn't anything on the horizon. There wasn't jack shit between 1999 and 2005, and then post-2008 until now, so be grateful this exists! But it's kind of confusing, because this is a Predator book, but the next is an Alien book, Alien Invasion, then an Alien vs. Predator. AVP Armageddon. So it's not really a Predator trilogy like the last three books were alien focused. It's like they saw what the Prometheus Fire and Stone story did by being a Prometheus, Predator, Alien, and Alien vs. Predator story all intertwined in the end. Regardless, it can be just as annoying because the book is actually called Predator Incursion The Rage War Book 1. I guess that means it's book number one of the Rage War trilogy, but it's just communicated poorly. It's not Predator Rage War 1, then Rage War 2, etc. They all have completely separate names, just too many subtitles. So this book. The first thing you want to know, is it good? I can say for sure, with full confidence, with no doubt in my mind, it is a resounding, eh. Do I recommend it? Sure, but let me explain a bit about it and you can decide if it hits your interests. I'll start with the setup. And remember, no spoilers, chill out. So the story takes place hundreds of years into the future. Way past the plot of Aliens or Predator, like 500 years past. We're talking faster than light travel, wormholes, plasma cannons, fancy full-body combat suits, AI systems, the works. Humans have continued to terraform planets and build space stations everywhere. Everything within the farthest reach of humanity is called the human sphere, something like three trillion square light years. Whale and Jutani, you know, those guys, the company, now outright owns the Colonial Marines, which is crucial to the company being the powerhouse that it was and always will be. It is THE corporation. Lately, there has been an uptick in predator incursions into the human sphere, which has resulted in many humans being carved up like turkeys at Thanksgiving dinner. Humans and the Marines are getting more worried about all-out war, while Wayland yutani just sees it as an opportunity to make more weapons and get their hands on some predator bodies to do more research and make more cool, expensive, profitable technology. Think the war economy from Metal Gear. While Predators and Aliens are well known to everyone in this universe, not to mention all the cloaking and weapon technology we've salvaged from them, there's still a lot to be learned, and that requires specimens. So we get a story about scientists studying Predators, Marines gearing up for war with lots of small skirmishes in space, and the company getting its hands on more crazy tech. But no one knows why the Predators are ramping up their movement into the human sphere, which is really the crux of the whole story, something which sets up the next two books in the series. Oh, and did I mention the group of crazy fundamentalists that want to destroy humanity? 
yep, sounds like a lot going on. Which is this book's biggest downfall? Look, I was totally psyched for a new Predator book since South China Sea back in 2008. There are definitely some cool ideas here, but this one has a major flaw. It takes forever to finally get anywhere. Kind of like the intro to this review. See what I did there? It's taking on the worst parts of things like The Walking Dead TV show. You end a chapter or episode on a bit of a cliffhanger. And then the next part takes place totally somewhere else, with different characters, or in a different time completely. You're excited to see what happens next after last week's huge impactful event? Well, fuck you! You get to watch a whole episode following a completely different group, or fill everything with flashbacks first. See you in another seven days to see what really happened to the main group, fucker. Or maybe another two weeks because fuck you, audience, we got to pad this shit out. Yeah, I'm talking about Glenn. Or Negan. Or they take the True Detective Season 2 route. Yeah, it sucked, okay? Get over it. You're introducing too many characters at too many different times. We're still meeting new characters over halfway through the book still, and not moving the story forward with the characters you are getting attached to. And those characters you've been trying to follow since the beginning, good luck remembering who's who since you just read 60 pages of another person's story and can't recall who is part of the 13, or which person was the scientist, or even what the 13 are, or what the founders are all about. Multiple times I had to go back to earlier sections of the book to clarify what had happened and which person I was hearing about now. Let's not forget the cool trope of seeing your dead family members while in a haze from being knocked out from an explosion and then waking up as they slowly dissipate from your view. Yeah, it's a cool moment except when it happens multiple times to multiple characters. Seriously, once was fine. Do you not remember the wise words of George W. Bush? He says, fool me once. Shame on Shame on you. you. Fool me, you can't get fooled again. That's my main gripe of this book. It's structure. As for the story, it's not bad, but it really makes it obvious that this is the beginning of a trilogy because practically nothing gets resolved. It feels like this entire book is just the exposition and setup for books two and three, which does itself a disservice. And don't get me started on that cover. Oh, it may seem silly to complain, but it's AVB2 Requiem. Literally, it's a shot from the movie when he's in the sewers. Everyone can agree that's the worst entry in any Alien or Predator movie franchise, and they thought it was a good choice to represent this work. So it's easy to tell this book made me upset. But that doesn't mean I don't recommend it. Even a mediocre Predator book in 2015 is worth reading. There are definite bright spots and some cool nods to the past, like one to Danny Glover in Predator 2. And it really does set up what I believe is going to be some major shit hitting the fan in the next two books. I can't imagine they could disappoint like this one did. There's just way too much stuff that's going to happen next. It can't possibly be boring.